Hey everybody, welcome to the program. We're so glad that you join us on this beautiful Monday afternoon. Listen, this is the first program that I've come back to live to tape uh, in probably about four or five weeks or so. And you may be wondering why you've been hearing some fabulous re, uh, revisits to previous shows. And it's because my beautiful Kevin, uh, the other Jack Russell of my two Jack Russells also passed away. She found her way uh, to Rainbow Bridge to be with her sister who had passed away eight weeks before. You can only imagine losing two dogs so special in my world. They were with me from the very beginning of my uh, coming to Nanaimo back in 2010, almost 11 years I've been living in our beautiful city. Uh, and they have been with me that whole time. So my house is empty from the sounds of their loving barks and their funny noises and those bangings and crackings and boomings that we have been hearing as the postman would go by during the taping of these radio programs or a car or for that matter, anything else. I miss them deeply. I really want to thank you, community, for your beautiful notes, your kind letters of support, both on Facebook and in my own mailbox. Uh, very grateful, knowing that the community cares so much. Um, and I thank you for that. But now being back in the seat, we've got a fabulous guest today. Cheryl Prince is joining us in the Zoom booth. So while we don't have the doggy noises, we still may have some noises as this is still being recorded over Zoom. I just want you to know that Cheryl Prince is really a phenomenal contributor to our community. Uh, she is not only an author and a nutritionist, a retired nurse, She's also a farmer and she brings to the table a wide breadth of understanding to the human condition and the human body. Welcome to the program, Cheryl. I am so delighted that you're with us today. Can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, I can do that, Kathy. First of all, I'm sorry for your loss. I totally get the pet thing. Um, you know, we as human beings are very connected to all kinds of spirits. So that kind of brings who I am. I am a holistic nutritionist, um, but um, I, I do a lot of various things. So I'm never quite sure what I do. So I have to just kind of throw that out there. I'm all about health and wellness and I'm about enjoying and living life to the fullest and helping em people embrace aging. Cause you know, it's a gift or something we all want to do is age, but we want to age well. And so I taught for 10 years at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition here in Nanaimo about the same time you moved here, ironically enough. In fact, I met you back then, actually. My first introduction to you, Cheryl, was at that school years back. Yeah, and you were on, I think you've been on a couple of the programs that I've hosted over the years, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. How has and, that and changed? Like you have, you're not at the school any longer, but you're doing all kinds of amazing things. So, yeah. so what we're, you know, I'm really about, we're actually, I'm launching a brand new podcast that I'm super excited with, with a fellow nurse out of Florida, actually. So we're ecstatic about this and it's the global wellness awareness agenda. We're hoping and we're educating people on the ability to embrace their health, yeah. to get the knowledge of their bodies and to be able to live their best life. Because you know, you and I have had this conversation. There is existing and then there's living. And I don't know, I'm in my mid, well, I hate to say it, I'm closer to 60 now than you know. You're so, a low sugar plum. <laughs> right? Exactly. And, I, and that's a part time of life where you can either say, hey, oh my gosh, I'm not excited about it and I really don't want to be there. Or we can embrace the gift that we have. And, you know, Jane Fonda likes to say, we're living the best times of our life. Yeah. So I like to assist people in embracing that, enhancing it and living it. So you're bringing to the table a podcast that you're that is going to talk about wellness what inspired you to move into that media because there's so much information that's out there that is hard to disseminate where where to go and what to do how did you and your friend in florida come up with this idea and and what do you plan to discuss um well we came up with this idea particularly because we're both nurses yeah and our job is to educate people on the body and yeah. educate people on health so we recognize that there's a 
I'm, I'm, it's not a, 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 I don't know how, I don't know if the word's stumbling on the word right now, but it's hard to take ownership of your body when you don't understand the medical terminology, you don't understand the scientific words. So what nurses generally do is we make it easier for you to understand yeah. and then empower you to be able to make the choices that sit with you. And something as a nurse always does is we make a care plan. We come into shift and we make a care plan. And we just want to help people make their own care plan. So that's how it evolved. The care plan by education and then implementing what's going to work for you individually. So I love how you use the word individually because everybody is different. Like and not, not only is everybody different, but every body is different. There may be some similarities in the chemistry, but overall what works for one person doesn't always uh, manifest in the same way for another. How can we, you know, as far as, you know, Jane, Jane Vonda to me is the epitome of womanhood at her age. I mean, the woman, just doesn't quit. She just keeps going. And I think she's in her 80s at this point. Uh, but I did notice that even her stability, her physical stability, while she is incredibly physically active, and she has certainly taken care of herself, her stability, her mobility is starting to be noticeably different on the screen. How can we, uh, how can, no, noting that there's so much differences in between our bodies, what are some of the root foundations that we can do to ensure that our basic root, while we may be different, what does that root maybe look like? You know, it, and you're right, Kathy, like she, she is, you're noticing different things. And it kind of goes into something that I want to talk about too, is like the diet industry. Yes, yes. Um, Because she was very, very big in the diet industry. And as you and I've had that conversation, the diet industry is kind of sort of to keep us confused. Yes, it does do. that indeed. It yes. does. And it makes us not have right body feelings about ourselves. And I always go with the one thing we have to recognize is regardless of who we are and what we look like on the physical side, we have to maintain a few different things. Are we able to exercise appropriately for our age? And when I say that, it means, are you able to walk? Are you able to climb stairs? Are you able to go on that hike? Are you able to, and I'm not talking running and all that no, kind of no, no, stuff. Of course not. Are you able to push yourself up like that yeah. off a chair yeah. and at your age? And so go to age appropriate, right? Because that's very, very important when you talk balance. And so when I taught at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition, I taught optimal nutrition for the brain. So that's protecting the brain as we age. So it's important to get the hand coordination to get that because I'm kind of look at Jane Fonda and I also noticed she's got red hands. I don't know if you noticed that, but that's poor circulation. So what else is going on with her? Yeah. Yeah. Understood. So, yeah. I like to look at nutrition. Are you getting the macronutrients required? And again, confusion are we supposed to eat fat? Are we supposed to eat gluten? Are we supposed to eat this, that, everything else? And everybody is individual. And you and I had that conversation because what's going on in your system, I don't know how much of your audience knows what's going on with yeah. yours, yeah. but I'm going to be very open about what's going on in my system. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I had um, Epstein-Barr virus, so that affected my brain. So I've had shingles in the brain. I've had meningitis. I have anxiety and I've had depression. I am insulin resistant because I had gestational diabetes. So therefore for my body and my brain health, I have to be cautious about my sugars. I have to be cautious about the fat intake. And above all, then it goes into that exercise, good nutrition, and what's your stress? What's your environmentally home life looks like? And right now, you know, like you're, you're, you're grieving. Yes. How are you, yeah. how are you handling the grieving? What are you doing for self care yeah. while you're doing a natural grieving? And we need to grieve. Don't get me wrong. Right. So crying and letting emotions come in, letting our lives be who we are, who are we bringing back into our life? Are they supportive? You know, so I look at the mind, body and the spirit. 
what we're putting in and what we're surrounding ourselves with. And that's basically, you know, the simple thing that we're trying to do with the wellness agenda, awareness. I'd like to go into that diet conversation for a bit, because I think that a lot of people have some really messed up ideas about what heavier set women are and who they are and why they are. Um, my, our audience knows, the Act 3 audience knows that I suffer from ulcerative colitis, that over the years I've been on a lot of steroids, which actually made me gain well over 60 pounds in a very short period of time. Not to say that I was ever a super, super slim gym before, but at the end of the day, certainly adding the extra weight from the medications has been a challenge. But what people also don't understand is that science has shown that most heavier set women Women particularly and men, but most ever, we, we do a lot of paying attention to women because of vogue and all of the you know expectations that society has on what a woman should look like more so than a man. Not to say it's not the same for men, but slightly different, I think. And what we know for sure is that most heavier set people are malnutritioned. <laughs> I mean, without a doubt, the doctors yeah. on my drugs had me eat nothing but white stuff, flour, pasta, no fibers. I was really excited because everyone knows that, uh, you know, that I belong to the Nanaimo Senior Services Network. We were having a picnic the other day and I was sharing that I was so excited at the fact that I was able to eat vegetables for the first time in two years. I wasn't allowed to have anything green. I wasn't allowed to have anything that had fiber in it because my disease would only inflame, would only get worse. And the idea was to shut my belly down. Well, white stuff does nothing but put weight on as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say in this conversation, Cheryl, is I'd love to hear your take on that malnutrition piece. And what does all of that really mean? Well, you know, let's talk about this elephant in the room because when you met me, I was malnourished. You and when much you heavier met me, than you are now, much heavier than you are now. Yeah. Very so, now. so I, no matter what I do, this is a great conversation because actually I, I, I love this conversation because you're right. Our diets, I was unaware. I'm a nutritionist. So I knew that I was eating whole food. So you could look at me and I know I was being judged. So my number is a hundred pounds. I fluctuate between 105 pound weight loss and 100, 100 pound weight loss. And so I have a five pound buffer that I carry. And I recognize that five pound buffer on the foods that I've eaten that could be causing me to keep some inflammation in. And that's something that is important to know yeah. that it's not weight, it's inflammation. Yes. My body then was malnourished and my body was malnourished because my intestines yep. were inflamed. Yeah, They were not. So I, I developed what they call leaky gut, right? So I like, yes. you know, and the leaky gut is the loosening of the junctions in the GI tract that let the proteins go by that then cause histamine reactions that then cause more inflammation that can cause more weight. So you are theoretically malnourished because your body is not able to get nourished. So you're not going into homeostasis naturally. That's right. Yeah. So you look at somebody and you think, oh my gosh, she must eat a lot or she must be doing this or she must be doing that. I actually eat more now at this weight than I ever ate before. And I know when I sit down at a meal, people look at me like, are you really putting that much on your plate and eating it? When I was hundred pounds more, I was putting a lot less. I had a very controlled diet and I was holding on to everything because yeah. my body needed it because I was in fight and flight because of the disease. So yeah. let's, you know, that's where I'm going with that one. I think it's important that we recognize the disease, though. The GI yeah. tract, the, the leaky gut syndrome, has is a is a broad discussion that has come to table in the last few years. There are numerous doctors who have authority over this uh, concept. 
Um, and there are so many mixed signals about, you know, whether you need uh, nightshade vegetables or no nightshade vegetables or this and that. I, I think that the more important conversation isn't what it is that you eat. It's how your body processes inflammation. And in my case, because I have ulcerative colitis, the lion's share of my body is inflamed and there's no, at this point, anecdote to, or antidote, not anecdote, but antidote to bring that, that down. We are working on it. The doctors have certainly uh, tried me on a new set of biology, uh, biologics, which have sent my body into an entirely different plane. I now have arthritis through my whole body. I walk with a cane three out of probably seven days a week. I have difficulty getting in and out of bed. I wear compression gloves on my hands. My mm. smile is still unaffected, but my body and my system have grown very uh, out of sync with what my inner health feels like it right. should be at this point. Right. And, you know, um, let's just say that even though you've got your beautiful smile on all the time, your body's in fight and flight mode all yeah. the time. That um, further makes you malnourished because your body is not able to utilize the nutrients in the food that you're taking even when you are ingesting them because it's saying oh i gotta store that right now that's what i don't need right now i need to get out of this situation it doesn't recognize that you're getting out of the situation that's going on in your own body yes it doesn't understand that it's not a saber-toothed tiger yeah. it just knows it needs to protect itself. So the food that you're ingesting, you store it. You know, um, I was talking to a functional medicine doctor out of um, New York this morning before we got on here. And she said, you know, the other thing is somebody will say, how could someone have fatty liver disease, but they don't drink alcohol? Yes. Because they're in fight and flight mode. Yes. Their body is storing the food ingesting the sugars that are in the muscles that are doing all kinds of things that are then holding on to the weight yeah. but causing fatty liver disease that is non-alcoholic and, yeah. and and i have the doctor has informed me i have fatty liver disease and i you know we we have a lot of jokes i didn't know that a lot of wine <laughs> yeah that's the new additive they added that to my to my system the other day and and don't get me wrong i love a glass of wine every now and then but over the last two years when you take the kind of drugs that you do that i do you yeah. kind of make some pretty severe choices and alcohol doesn't become one of those choices not to say i don't have the imbibe once in a while but i have to be so very careful when i do imbibe that i i make my choices carefully um now i do want to ask you about that fatty liver what does that really mean to people what does that mean yeah i hear it's becoming a buzzword uh, so it's like six what do you mean what does it mean it means that your liver yeah. is entwined with fat that's it that the liver is not able to work itself the way it's supposed to work it's right. supposed to be our detoxing center it's supposed to be able to look after the red blood cells it's supposed to regenerate all our minerals our hormones our everything in our body it is the working unit when you add any kind of inflammation or the wrong triglycerides which we know will then get into the blood system yeah which then causes party problems in our arterial walls and you know like yeah but our liver is unable to process and rejuvenate things. So it's not functioning properly. That's what that is. And we're finding, they are finding in the functional medical society that that's caused from stress. Yes. Stress, stress, stress. Yes. And you know, when we were talking at that picnic the other day, I'm like, I thought I was a busy person, you know, I run five businesses, like I'm all over the world, but I, I take the downtime of running in the woods and I book myself my three hours of, of meditation workout time. I never heard that self care component coming into you, but you did do something I was pretty proud of. You said, I think I'm going to step away from one thing as soon as somebody else drop, jumps in. Yeah. And, you know, that goes back into that component of self-care. 
Well, the good news is just so our audience and you know, I'm the queen of self-care. I make oh, sure great. I sleep well. I walk whenever I can. I love being in the woods. I camp regularly. Uh, at least this year I have. Uh, no, I'm, I, and, and I, I actually imbibe in really um, delightful foods, right? I mean, I love I love seafood. And so when I want to treat myself, which is pretty regularly, I, seafood is a big part of my plate. Um, you know, I, I don't, I do feel that it, there's like everybody else, there, this is a bit, we, 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 I think we're in a society that prides itself on its busyness. The busier we are, the more successful we are. Most of it is a bunch of hooey, but I think that our vision, right? of what success looks like very often doesn't have that self-care conversation as part of the discussion. It, it does, you know, like, um, that's what I love about being my age now, because I get, to, I actually am so enthralled in the passion of what I get to do without the responsibility of looking after little kids anymore. So that's, you know, the, the beauty about being our age now, we get to live that and we get to schedule in our self care. And for me, it's a nine o'clock, everything shuts off and I go into a bath and I just relax and I meditate and I think of the gratitude that I'm bringing into my life, you know? So that's a, you know, self care is different for everybody. It is, absolutely. It, I think it's that time of reflection of what I want, what I'm enjoying and what I'm loving out of my life, right? I hear you. And you just created a perfect segue for a moment. I, for those listeners that have just tuned in, welcome to the program. We are delighted that you're here. I'm Kathy Holmes. I'm the host of Act 3 in the Zoom booth with me today here on CHLY 101.7 FM in beautiful downtown Nanaimo is Cheryl Prince. Cheryl is an author, a nutritionalist, a retired nurse, and a farmer because now we're going to move into the farming side of the self-care. I want to know how those two fit. Hmm. Well, because it's the farm, right? There's so much work that often goes with having a lot of chickens and a lot of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I use my chickens as a place to downsize. I mean, and when I mean that is like when when it gets too much with people and yeah. I'm an introvert. So I go out and I hang out with my chickens. It's very simple. Yeah. Give me some food, give me some bugs. Can I get your, can I peck your toes? Um. Totally. I, I, for those that, that don't know, I used to have 25 chickens all the time. So I lived uh, on the border of Maple Ridge and Missions. We had a very small acreage there. And in my family, my favorite thing to down, like just to let the world go was to call, be with my birds. I missed the birds. They were so fun. They are, they, they've got personality and, and they've they got, do. you know, they're like a little community. I always thought, you know, if I'm going to build a little um, bully community to teach kids, it's going to be with chickens. You oh, know, yeah, <laughs> like sure. teach them yeah, how it a, is. There's a pecking order for sure. Yeah. But each one yeah. certainly has its own personality. Absolutely. And then there's also the digging in the dirt and we're getting, and again, getting close to earth you know you're getting your fingers dirty but you're getting the microbes you know that we're missing out of our our life you know yeah absolutely. and um, it is meditating yeah. it is so meditating to be there so we've done a big structural change so part of our business here has changed at Prince Acres so I'm not as much hands-on but in saying that, now we've got volunteers coming. Now we've got kids coming onto the farm. Now we've got seniors coming and doing volunteer shifts. We're um, What does your farm do? I, it's, I, it's not a personal farm. It sounds like it's a much bigger uh, enterprise when you've got volunteers and you know all of yeah, that. Yeah, well, Prince Acres is we are the community hub here in Lotsville. Uh -huh. And as a nutritionist, it's people could come up and shop at our farm and then I can help them make proper choices or say, you know, um, this is it. They could come and ask me questions. I'm kind of like the little John of God sitting in my table at the back there helping people navigate the system. You know, being a nurse and a nutritionist, I'm offering both sides. So I'm not extreme. And that's really important to know is like, we love to be able to offer things. So our community became a bit of a hub for people to come and shop. And then it was to hang out and talk to the neighbors. And then it was to give a little bit more. Um, if I don't see a senior in our community for a few weeks, it's like, 
hey, has anybody seen so-and-so? And it's a check-in point. And now it's a check-in point if young moms that are new to the community come and like, do you know somebody? And then we got a bulletin board and then people come and volunteer just to get into the dirt and then we'll you know, help out with vegetables. And so we do over 50 different crops. We've got blueberries oh to, to eggs to, and then we have a micro bakery in here that we do sourdough bread and croissants. And um, we are Health Canada, or we are um, Revenue Canada approved to bring in children's program to bring youth in oh to my help God, that's amazing. them so that they're not on the streets. Um, I work in addiction program for young people who are, again, because alcohol is acceptable in society, but some of us can fall into abusing it or misusing it. And so we help navigate people to responsible usage or accepting that it's okay not to drink because I abstain from alcohol completely because of my brain injuries. I didn't need anything else to help to, to mess up my brain. You know, I'm trying to fix my brain. So for me, I completely abstain. So we have all these little things going on. Um, wow. The age group of kids that show up is between 18 months and about 85 or 90 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. okay. Okay. So once again, a perfect segue into the program at this <laughs> time of the show, I usually tell people, go get a piece of paper and a pen, because you're going to want to know how to reach out to Cheryl and you might want to go to her farm. I know I'm thinking I'd like to go to your farm and do a bit of shopping. That's for sure. So in a few minutes, you can give us that information. And meanwhile, people will go and grab their paper and their pen. Again, if you just tuned in, you're listening to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. Um, Cheryl, is there a such thing? Is there such a thing as a superfood? Every food is a superfood. So that's a bunch of buoy to think that there's one more fantastic than another. You know what? You're right. We can get caught up in this and we can get caught up in, oh, I got to have this or I got to have this or I got to have that. For me, I can't eat quinoa. Quinoa can be a superfood. Not for me. You know, yeah. coconut can be a superfood. Not for you. Avocados, nuts. My pancreas doesn't like it that much. You know, don't buy into that. We are meant to eat within the seasons. We are meant to eat with what is in our community. We are meant to enjoy food and not get caught up. We're human beings with an experience. We're not here to have confusion. Eat simple. Oh, that was going to be my last tidbit there. Oh, but. that's okay. We can take that tidbit back because there's so much more, right? I mean, I, I do understand what you're saying. I think that there's a lot of, you know, for years we hear scientists say, you can't drink milk. You will, it'll give you cancer. This is going to give you that. If you take, no, you know, you've got to stay away from meat. You've got to stay away from tomatoes. You've got to stay away from this. You've got to stay away from that. And and it's become so doggone confusing because it feels like it, like every year or every two years, something that we thought was, you know, taboo is become the superfood and we yeah. have just ignored it. So I, I have a very difficult time understanding the diet industry as a whole. You know, Kathy, I'm sorry to interrupt you here, yes, but it, I is appreciate meant, that. it is meant to confuse us. Okay. Yeah. It is a trillion dollar industry that then makes you feel shitty Oh, it makes you feel terrible about yourself. Sorry, you can have to bleep that word. It is set to make you feel bad so that you go out there and use and consume and think that you need other stuff. Food is simple. It's been made one way since mankind. Growing whole from a garden in your backyard, your community neighborhood garden, Nanaimo Food Share, um, Nanaimo Four, um, what is it called? The four, four mile or four acre farm in yep. Nanaimo yep. that's connected with Food Share. I mean, this is how you get connected yeah. to, yeah. Your, to it. You know, so it is not. 
sorry, honey, for those of you that are listening to this program and you're hearing Nanaimo, Nanaimo, this program does go all the way, you know, all over Vancouver and Ireland and the Sunshine Coast. And on YouTube, of course, if you subscribe and you join us on YouTube, it is a worldwide program. I think that it's important that even though we may use the word Nanaimo, the reality is all of these things are happening in everybody's community, whether or not you're on Gabriola Island or you're in Kelowna or Kamloops, you know, where it doesn't matter where you are in the province or in Canada or the United States or the world, there's always going to be a community garden, right? Absolutely. And that goes into my segment way. You know, in March, I decided everybody needed to know who their farmer was. So our farm is Prince Acres. We are in Upper Lanceville. We're very easy to find. Cheryl Prince. Google me. You can find me anywhere because I've been fortunate to be part of this wellness community that Kathy and Tressa have brought me into the school, the farming area. Yeah. It's simple, but you're right. I'm talking to people in Pennsylvania, in New York, in Florida. The small community farm, go find them. They're everywhere. And the farmer's market when you can't, right? And we have, I mean, I know that throughout Vancouver Island, there's a list of an island routes uh, every Wednesday, I think, and meets up at Bevan Park. Like there's lots and lots of places that you can go to get uh, some fresh nutrients. You know, people talk about the soil being damaged though in commercial farming, right? We're losing a lot of the nutrition that is coming out of the land. Um, I'm curious about your take on that. Is that true, false, or another myth? That actually is 100% true. It is true. And so now that goes into why I do, I promote a supplement, Kathy. I know you know I, I promote a supplement. Yeah. And I only promote one supplement. And it's a specific one because it doesn't take the digestive system to do anything. And crazy enough as it is, it's 60,000 year old dirt. So I support dirt. Um, in every way. <laughs> okay, wait. Well, now I know that you and I have kind of at NSN meetings, we sort of talked a little bit about the dirt, but I'm confused about it. Could you? Okay, so what happened is the better listeners are. So let's talk about 60,000 year old dirt, shall we? Let's, let's talk about it. Okay. Our plants decompose on a regular basis. So yeah. you go out there and you compost your, your plants, you compost everything, and it becomes soil. And this soil compresses down and then we grow our vegetables out of this soil. And then there is a substance called fulvic, F-U-L-V-I-C. Okay. And that is the smallest molecule of breaking down the plants. And that is scattered in your dirt. And in your dirt, you've got microbes, you've got minerals, you have rocks, you have roots you have mycelium you have fungi all of that okay yeah. this fall vic which is what i drink this fall vic picks up those minerals and they deliver it to the plants that we're eating okay yeah so the plant can only get what the soil has now, if you're buying your food that doesn't do crop rotation and they grow kale in the same spot every year, every year, every year, there is going to be less magnesium in that plant than there was the first time they grew it because there's not enough minerals in the soil to be picked up by this fulvic so that we can get it. Understood. So what, yeah, that's very simple, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I can completely understand that. I think that what I want to put a very, very strong um, emphasis, caution and emphasis on is it, you can't just go outside, put a tablespoon of dirt in your water and eat it like that is not like in all fairness, with great respect. Right. And on on the video uh of this this uh broadcast on on the um on our youtube station uh act three youtube station you will find this information we'll make sure it's up there for you in the in the comments box but i do want to be very clear you're not going outside cheryl how do you how do you how do you talk, um for our radio listeners how do you take this you, it's, it's so it's so simple that our it's formulated here in canada so okay. all we've done is taking the hydrogen out of the water 
to make it just oxygen. And all we do is add water back to the fulvic mineral itself. Okay. That mineral contains already 60 trace minerals. Right. So you're, it's a powder that you put into a glass. You pour some hot water, cold water into it. You water. it like tea. It comes back out clear. Right. Oh, there yeah, for the radio listeners. So for those who see it, I'm putting, I just put a tab in a bottle in some water, clear water. It, I drink this and then bang, it goes through the blood brain barrier over across my digestive system. So that leaky gut is not a component anymore. The fatty liver is not a component. I drink this, it puts that right directly into my cellular level. So now when you lost a hundred pounds, you didn't do that quickly. I think that's really important. It oh, that's that really thing. And, and I, you know, what is there, was there a connection to taking this liquid at the same time? Like, you know, what, what was the start? What made you first of all realize, okay, I need to lose this weight and, and how did you begin? Okay. So it, beg it actually began was, wow, there's something going on. I, um, I had lost the hair under my armpits. I'd lost the hair on my legs. I had a small minor heart attack one night. I don't know how many people know that, but I woke up and my head was sweating. I had chest pain and stupid me, I went into the bathtub instead of going to the emergency room. And fortunately enough, being a nurse, I recognized two days later that my legs were purple. They were, they were not getting the circulation. So I went to my doctor, I had an ECG done and it showed up I had a blockage. From there, I went and did my stress test, realized I had a, a blockage in my heart and I went and chose traditional Chinese medicine because I have, for myself, I, that my, my body, I have a lot of pharmaceutical interactions. So therefore I get all the adverse reactions. So I chose to do traditional Chinese medicine she reversed my thyroid disorder that didn't show up in a test, but I had to be on her herbs and do acupuncture for that. So that was costing me a lot of money to maintain that style of life, to be able to maintain my health without my body flipping back into gaining the weight back. So with her, I successfully lost 20 pounds over four months, nice and slow, a pound every week, really, really slow. So I was protecting my brain while I was doing that. And then when I, what happened was every time I would take a break from her, I'd gain the weight back. So it wasn't correcting my thyroid. It was just balancing it and costing me a lot of money to balance it. I found fulvic humic minerals um, I tried it, I started it, and that balanced my thyroid. So then the weight, I I'm, I'm nourished my body because I had digestive problems. I mean, I, you don't come into disease without being malnourished. Let's go into that one too, right? Yep. You know, um, disease is a mineral deficiency. So now I'm finding out, even though I eat off an organic farm, I eat, I eat organic, I eat wild, I'm still a hundred pounds overweight and I've got heart problems. This gave me the minerals I needed. It nourished me. And then my body naturally went into homeostasis. My body naturally balanced the endocrine system. My body match it. My body did it because I was finally got the nourishment I needed from these, the specific minerals. And you think, and again, it's because it's not coming from the soil and the food I'm eating. Yeah. And the reality is that particular product for you has proven to be very successful for you. But I do want to emphasize the time that it took for the weight loss over a hundred pounds didn't come off quickly. As you said, it was very slow. It was, you were seeing results as your body was properly being nurtured and, and the nourishment was going into the system. Uh, and then things started to take place. 
Right. The first thing I noticed when I got the minerals and I got my body nourished was I started to sleep. And you think, oh, okay, because I had been in a lot of pain. I had been in a car accident. I'd had some, through nursing, you can't not have a back injury. You know, like this, all kinds of things, right? So let's, you know, so I started to sleep because minerals help the endocrine system. They help your body get regulated. Um, so then I started sleeping and then I could exercise then I could do a bit more in the day. Then my other glands started working right. And then things started working right. So it took me 14 months to lose a hundred pounds. Wow. I lost it very slow. Now, and I want the importance on this. And you and I had this discussion just so that, because we're talking, I'm going to go there and I'm going to fad diet and I'm going to lose hundred pounds in four months. Well, you're yeah, going to gain hundred pounds back because your body's not getting regulated. You're just starving for a brief period of time. Yeah. You're not actually nourishing your body. You're setting yourself up. But the big thing that we have to recognize that when we are losing weight, first we go into the excess sugars that we are stored in our blood system. Then we go into the excess little bit of protein percentage that goes into the muscles. Then we take the fat. Yeah, the fat so not, will come from our brain. So, and it's not that, it, you know, there's the keto thing. People are like, okay, so here we go with the high protein limited carbohydrate it's not like there's no carbohydrates i have to tell you the keto thing set my body off onto a it woke my uc up and i truly believe that it was one of although there were many it was one of the catalysts uh to make my system break down so what are your thoughts to that keto it's the i mean people are losing weight right left and center and they're oh, yeah. it so fast like Oh, absolutely. You know, people are talking about that. Again, if it comes off fast, it'll come back on even faster. <laughs> and then some usually. And then usually more. Like I, I, I love to laugh about this. I've lost the same 50 pounds about 25 times over, you know. Yeah. And I'm nearing 60. So I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there every I'm pretty darn close. Uh, my my upcoming birthday is making me even closer. Um, and the reality is, is that it's different now. Menopause has sort of settled things. My system is no, I mean, I don't have the frequency of hot flashes, but I know perfectly well that all of those bells and whistles that I used to experience uh, in the heat of menopause, pardon the pun, uh, mm -hmm. are certainly changing. And so you can't do things as quickly. And my appetite is not the same as that it once was. So if I'm going to choose to put something in my body, I try to choose first and foremost, how well can my body digest this? Because that's yes. where I need to be still right now. And then second of all, you know, the calorie, I don't worry about calories as much as I worry about the quality of the food that I'm eating. I mean, I know that an avocado has a way lot more calories in it, um, but compare that to a bag of chips and we're talking quality versus crap, right? So, and not to say that I don't have a chip every now and then either, but my, my point is, is that, you know, calories in themselves are not the indic indicator of whether or not something is good for your body or not, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't buy into any of the fad diets or any of the superfoods. I don't buy into juicing. I don't buy into smoothies. Now, when I say that, let's talk about, I'm malnourished. I'm going to get as many mineral. I'm going to try to get as much nourishment in my body as possible, yeah. but am I going to be able to utilize it? Because, you know, if you're doing a smoothie, do you get the enzymes to break them down? Do you get the enzymes to utilize them once they hit the digestive system? Because you've got to chew. Yeah. That's where that comes in. I don't, I eat vegetables. I eat animal protein. I eat eggs. I eat, if I want a piece of cake and you see me the other day, eat ice cream. So I'm not depriving myself of anything. I am looking at, yeah. I did have an effect and I, and you and I have, I said, I'm going to have ice cream, even though I know it's going to hit me tomorrow in one way, but I know, it's, I know how to manage that. Yeah. I made a, a decision 
I'm based on what I wanted. I'm not depriving myself. Don't deprive yourself. Be no, smart. No, that actually makes it even worse when you do. So you you're do. better. You're better to have whatever it is that you want in small doses. Yeah. And even, you know, I, I'm not an expert on dieting. I'm the, the first person, uh, you know, I, it's great for me to help facilitate the conversation, but, you know, I, I know where, I mean, I, I'll never be five foot eight and a half and be 97 pounds like I was when I graduated from high school at 58 years old. Like it's never. not going to happen, right? It's not going to happen that my, and nor do I want to be. I found that, you know, my weight when I was at my most comfortable was about 150, 155. As I'm getting older, I'm thinking very much like my learning capability. I've got 58 minutes of, you know, concentrated before I got to take a break. If I'm 158, the world won't end, right? I think the two of them are in con conjunction with the frame of my body comfortably. But that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of work because the drugs that I've been on have put on a lot of weight. Again, but I've also seen people in their 50s, like yourself, in their 50s and older who have successfully been able to monitor and change the configuration of their weight by making some small choices a minute at a time. Right. So the ice cream is not the big deal. The gallon is the big deal. The, you know, the sweet tooth is not the big. I had a craving for Nanaimo bar so bad. And I don't know why. I don't normally eat chocolate that much. And I certainly, Nanaimo bars are, I'm, they're a treat, but they were very dense in calories. I had a craving so badly for them for like months. I couldn't find them in any of the stores. Couldn't find them anywhere. But last week I found some. And I'll tell you, I've had a single, I bought their, they come in a package of six. I've had one Nanaimo bar every day, one Nanaimo bar, not two, not the package, one Nanaimo every day. And instead of having a higher calorie, other thing for breakfast, for example, like cheese or whatever, I've just mounted it off. Now, calories by calories, some people believe calories a calories a calorie. Yeah, Is there any no. truth to that? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. Calorie oh, wow. in, calorie out, right? Yeah. If, if it takes so much energy. You need so much energy in, so much energy out. That's what a calorie is, okay? Yeah, it's energy. So the quality of our food is everything. The quality of our food. So, you know, if I'm going to have cheese, I'm going to have a good quality cheese and I'm not going to worry about it because yeah. I'm a cheese junkie and I, I'm, I'm sorry, if I, if I pay $20 for a block of cheese, I'm going to savor it. Of course. If I pay, if I pay $20 or I mean, if I pay $5 for a big chunk of cheese, I'm going to eat the whole thing. You know, I don't have that kind of guy. My guideline is how much does this cost me and how much can I divide it? Right. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> Oh, I, love that. I love that you know I'm gonna have my chocolate I'm gonna have my cake and eat it too but I'm gonna do it in in a way that I'm gonna respect the other things that are going into my body and you know and it's like when I was younger I knew I needed to eat a good meal before I went out and had a couple cocktails with my girlfriends because otherwise I would get drunker <laughs> yep, so yep, I'm going to nourish my body with the good stuff 80% of the time. And then that 20% of the time, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to say, darn, I did that. I'm going to start my diet on Monday and that's it. No, I'm going to eat that so, today. So much in life, Cheryl, is about the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of the population does 80% of the commerce right 20 percent of the population or, or 10 percent of the population does this for that 80 percent result i love that 80 20 rule i think it's a very valuable measurement right it's like 80 percent of the time i'm going to be as good as i can in this situation and 20 percent of the time i can give myself permission right it's never it should not be all or nothing right we don't need to go zero to 60 you know, going zero to six, doing the all for nothing. Let, let, that You're setting yourself up for failure. Oh. You are setting yourself up for sale. Nobody 
can do everything perfectly all the time. And when they do, they end up having a breakdown. So no, it doesn't work that way. No. Something gives. Our body is supposed to be gentle. It's supposed to say, yeah, I want to enjoy it. And, you know, I'm really connected with my, with my God. And, and it's like, it wouldn't give us all these beautiful things if we weren't supposed to enjoy them. Certainly we never true. made Nanaimo bars if we weren't supposed to have one every once in a while, you know? I hear you. I, I'm with you, sister. I'm a woman of faith and I have exactly the same thing. It's like, you know, it's to me, it's the two fish and the bread. The, the abundance is there for all of us when we choose to use abundance in a positive way and in a healthy way. Cheryl, it's been a grand privilege to have you on the program today. I'm so delighted that you were able to join us. And it's my first guest back after being on a bit of a sabbatical. At the end of the program, I always ask my guests, because it's my favorite part of the show, is sharing the wisdom of, you know, of, of all that we've talked about. And I'm curious, what is that? If you could imbibe on our community, what might that piece of wisdom look like for you in this moment? Oh, this, you know, this, that's a really good question. And I'm mulling it through and I'm like, keeping it simple, just eat like this or do that. I think the wisdom I have to give you is honor yourself love yourself and value everything you have to offer because we all are valuable and we don't need to make ourselves feel bad about anything there's enough in the world going on out there that can make us feel terrible don't do it from within love and honor yourself nourish yourself well Oh, I got shivers from that piece of wisdom. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. And hopefully we'll all take a little bit of your advice. Thank you for being on the program today, Cheryl. It's certainly been my treat and privilege. I'm glad that you were here. Thank you very much. Yes. And gentlemen, that's pretty much us for today's episode of Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. If you have just tuned in, don't forget to tune in a little bit earlier. One o'clock, this program starts. We'd love to see you join us at that time next Monday when uh, my guest will be Judy Stefan. Uh, listen, this is all about taking care of each other. And right now with COVID-19, we know that that fourth wave is out there with the Delta variant. Please be careful with the people that you are with. If you can, please try to make sure that you do get vaccinated and let's look after each other. If you choose not to vac get vaccinated, that is, of course, your decision by all means. But please make sure you wash your hands and mask up so that all all of us can look after each other and all of us should follow that route anyway for those of you that are working diligently on the forest fires thank you thank you thank you for everything that you've done for our community we know that as this was being taped lady smith is also on fire to all of the workers out there to our good friends uh, that are living in that uh, region we send you our blessings and our love and hope that you will be out of that terrible fire very, very soon. Once again, thanks for tuning in to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. I'm Kathy Holmes. I'm your host. That does it for today. We'll see you next time on Act 3.